Hello, and welcome to Agri-Food Conversations, brought to you by ISLAC, the Van Trump Report, the Yield Lab Institute, and Family Farms Group. My name is Zachary Sorensen. I am a program manager of the Yield Lab Institute team, and we set to welcome you all to today's call. Agri-Food Conversations is all about driving innovation in agriculture. Each month, we highlight a specific theme, including emerging topics such as soil health, plant genetics, vertical farming, and aquaculture, to name a few. On today's Agri-Food Conversation call, we are joined by Michael Lynch of Chonix. Chonix is a nutrient recycling company founded to help make agriculture and animal production more sustainable. The egg and poultry industry produces byproducts rich in nutrients, which Chonix recycles, using a process built and refined in nature. Chonix converts this poultry manure into high value fertilizer and proteins. It is currently scaling this process to handle thousands of tons of byproduct per day, producing tons of sustainably produced fertilizer and protein per day to offset today's expensive, non-renewable nutrient use. Each of you know companies are more likely to succeed with the right network of customers, talent, investors, and advisors. We invite you to this call because you are some of the most talented people in Chonix's market, or you are potential member customers for, Chon for Chonix's products and services, or you built and sold a company like Chonix, or even you're just a sophisticated business person who understands Chonix's market and the challenges it may face. Before we get started, we have a quick poll question to get a few, better idea of who we have on the call today. Please take a few seconds to answer. Uh, and we will also begin with a few processing comments. One, we are not soliciting investments. This presentation is to provide information about Chonix's products and services to help them find customers, mentors, and other strategic relationships that can help them grow their business. Two, you're all on mute. You can use the chat window to ask a question. After the formal part of the presentation, we will answer as many questions as time allows. And three, this presentation is being recorded and will be available for replay within 24 hours. So without further delay, I'm pleased to introduce Michael Lynch, CEO and co-founder of Chonix. Please take it away, Michael. All right, Th thank you very much, Zach. Um, I'm Michael Lynch, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Chonex, and uh, I'm, I'm a little sick today, and I apologize for that. I have a really, really bad ragweed uh, allergy, and I'm, I'm a little congested. Um, I guess, uh, start by giving you a big picture overview of, uh, of what we do at Chonex. Chonex is a nutrient recycling company focused on recycling poultry manure. Chonex is developing a proprietary and patentable process that uses black soldier fly larvae to recycle chicken manure into high value organic fertilizer and animal protein. <clears throat> In detail, our process involves applying a specialized blend of bacteria ammonia inhibitors, other specialized microorganisms, and black sulfur fly larvae. Excuse me. Uh, and then our black soldier fly uh, larvae consume poultry, poultry layer manure, which then consumes and recycles the manure into high value organic fertilizer with special antifungal microbial properties and an AFCO approved protein feed for poultry and aqua aquaculture. Chonex is currently refining and scaling this process at its specialty built industrial grade processing facility. The goal will be to process up to 80 tons of poultry manure per day. I apologize for that. My, my four-year-old daughter just walked in from, from school and I'm sick at home today. I'm uh, just getting, kicking them out of the house. Uh, so with excellent support from corporate partners in the ag and poultry industry, leading investors in the Southeast and leading research institutions, Chonex plans to build additional facilities to recycle thousands of tons of manure a day. <clears throat> uh, let me tell you a little bit about how we got the name Chonex. The name Chonex comes from the four elements of protein, C for carbon, H for hydrogen, O for oxygen, N for nitrogen, and X for extraction, where the protein feed is one of the high value products created in Chonex nutrient recycling process. 
On, on February 27th, 2017, Chonex became registered as a Delaware LLC when I and my partner, Harley Martin, co-founded Chonex. Chonex soon won the Birmingham Venture Capital Club's pitch contest and then won the Alabama Launchpad Startup, which allowed for 12 months of small-scale R&D, building a team of industry experts and a strong base of technical knowledge, and began to develop a partnership with the world's largest egg producer. In November 2018, Chonex raised a $1.5 million seed round and transitioned into a Delaware C, C Corporation. Chonex was then able to hire several nutrient recycling experts to begin a six month of bench testing in Sylacauga, Alabama to better understand the optimum environmental conditions, biological conditions, and mass balance for its nutrient recycling process. In May 2019, Chonex moved its operations to Robertsdale, Alabama to be adjacent to Cal Main Foods Layer House, which produces 60 tons a day of wet manure. <clears throat> Some key milestones achieved to date. Chonex has developed a patentable proprietary process in a laboratory setting. Chonex has achieved FDA AFCO approval for poultry manure, for AFCO aquaculture, poultry feed, uh, and our black soldier fly larvae conversion process. We're the first and only U.S. company to do this so far. We developed a partnership with a key supplier, Calmain Foods, the world's largest egg producer. We've raised one point, a $1.5 million seed round from top tier invest, investors, Jemison Investment Company and Brad Dunn, an experienced process engineer and former chair of the Moet Company. We secured an initial site adjacent to Calmain uh, to develop our pilot facility. Uh, we began testing a prototype process to begin production, uh, commercial grade process, uh, quarter one of 2020. We partnered with Southern Research, one of the largest environmental research organizations in the U.S., for ongoing National Science Foundation, Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, and the U.S. Department of Agricultural Grant Research. We have a $1.5 million pending SBTTR grant with the National Science Foundation. Uh, in partnership with CalMain, and we've partnered with the International Fertilizer Development Center, the world's largest fertilizer research organization, and have a $1.2 million pending Soul Health Research Grant uh, with the Foundation for Food and Agriculture. <clears throat> so let me tell you a little bit how we got started. Um, these three states right here, Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia, make up about a third of the poultry production in the United States. Um, between these three states, uh, the, the poultry industry produces roughly 2 billion ton, tons of manure each year. That's more manure than all the cattle and hogs in the United States combined. <clears throat> I guess, and, and how we got started really, we're really lucky and fortunate to be, to be blessed with some really great leaders in the poultry industry, in the fertilizer industry, in the agriculture industry. Um, I would say the, the, the most important characteristic of a, of a great leader is humility. And I think it's the humility in uh, Sherman Miller and Taylor Purcell and uh, Larry Newton that allowed us to get started. Larry is, is really the godfather of this industry. If anyone Googles manure and black soldier flies, We'll see hundreds of articles written by Larry. Larry was a, a waste engineer at the at North Carolina State, uh, got his PhD at NC State, and uh, moved to Tifton, Georgia to help run the University of Georgia's Agricultural Research Station. Right when he was starting his career, he uh, he noticed black soldier flies around all the all the the swine houses, the poultry houses, uh, the dairy farms. And uh, they all seemed to really love the manure. And Larry had the idea of, you know, how you could commercialize and scale up this process, which started in 1975. Um, he spent about 40 years researching um, this process, trying to figure out how to commercialize it. And uh, I met Larry when he was 73 years old. And I read all his work and talked to him about uh, this idea and that we felt like uh, finally, black soldier flowers were going to be approved by FDA as a, as a legal feed ingredient for uh, poultry and fish. 
And uh, we brought Larry onto our team and basically used his 40 years of research to help us model uh, our process and think through how we would design and commercialize a, a large scale process. Um, after we brought Larry onto the team, I was very fortunate to meet Sherman Miller. And again, uh, you know, back to humility, um, Sherman runs the largest egg company in the world. Um, when my partner talked to Sherman uh, and, and the CEO, Dolph Baker, about what we were doing, um, Sherman came and spent a couple of days at our at our hunting camp and uh, went deer hunting with us and um, and talked to us about what was going on and about Cal Maine's mission to be the world's most sustainable egg producer. And uh, and Sherman gave us a shot. He, uh, he allowed us to work on this project and, and over the last couple of years, he and Cal Maine have invested a lot of time and resources helping us get this process off the ground. And uh, we're very grateful for that. And last but not least, um, Two, two really important folks here in Alabama, Taylor Purcell. Um, the Purcell family is a real famous family in Alabama. They invented the time release fertilizer and uh, grew their fertilizer business to the second largest fertilizer uh, company in the United States. Um, and eventually sold it to Agrium. It was about 10 years ago, ago um, for, for, for quite a sum of money. And the IFDC, the IFDC is the world's largest fertilizer research organization that stands for the International Fertilizer Development Center. Their director of research is a, is a guy named Upendra Singh. Uh, and Upendra has spent, spent about four years working with insect grass as a high value fertilizer. And Taylor was able to connect us with the IFDC. Um, they were really excited about this project and they've worked with us for about two years to really understand the mass balance, the microbiome, all the living organisms in our fertilizer product and how we can best create a product that fits our, our customers' needs. Um, and then Taylor gave us a uh, space right down the road from his office where, uh, where we did six months of, of research, uh, where our space was provided for, our utilities were provided for, and even uh, housing for, for our research director. And um, after six months of, of bench testing, we felt like we were confident enough to go build a pallet faci facility down in Baldwin County, right next to Cal Main. So I don't know if, if y'all have ever seen this map before. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty famous map uh, the USDA put out and it shows the watersheds with a high potential for soil and water degradation uh, for manure phosphorus. They, uh, EPA really doesn't monitor nitrogen because it's so volatile and it'll go, go back into the atmosphere, but phosphorus stays in the soil. And this right here kind of shows you where the, the, the large scale animal production is going on in the United States. And this is where the phosphorus is starting to build up. And you know, over decades and decades and decades of farmers putting manure out as a low cost fertilizer, uh, the nutrients have really built up in the soils. And now when there's a big rain, um, there's there's potential for for nutrient pollution and and that all the all that rainwater running into the creeks and streams and rivers, which has caused a lot of issues for for uh, communities across the United States. Just going to give you a, a few quick numbers. Um, we have 70 million hogs that produce 190 million tons of manure. Um, we have 95 million cattle that produce about 1.2 billion tons of manure. But, but as you can see, it's, it's really the poultry industry with over 10 billion chickens. Uh, that really makes up the majority of the manure being produced across the United States. And, and because most of that's concentrated in the Southeast, I think that's why leaders from, from Alabama and Mississippi and Georgia really all came together and said, you know, let's, let's come up with a solution for this problem and, and let's figure out how to recycle the manure into something more valuable and, and get, it, get it out of these areas where it's causing trouble. <clears throat> I'm gonna go through real quickly the three three major problems this uh, the industry kind of focuses on. Um, the, the first issue is it's a large waste footprint. You just saw that in the map. Um, over six six billion tons of poultry manure comes from over 10 billion chickens. Um, and because of that, uh, the industry is, is facing regulations, fines, political pressure, and uh, and they're really being encouraged encouraged th through those three three forces to solve the problem. Um, there's a 
you know, current agriculture processes are not sustainable. We all know one third of the grains, one third of the fisheries, um, 95% of the soybeans all goes to animal feeds. And that is not a sustainable way of, of, of feeding animals. Uh, and last but not least, the, the growing demand for food uh, is propelling some supply and demand imbalances. Um, you know, our, our population's pro projected to grow um, an, another by another 2 billion people by 2050. And so how, how are we gonna feed all these people? Um, so I know there's a lot of interest in looking for alternative sources for protein. And I think these are three of the big factors that are driving the industry. I would say these are the three biggest factors driving our competition in the market. Um, and because of that, and because that protein market's getting fairly crowded, uh, we've decided to work on uh, niche markets that have more to do with fertilizer, uh, including soil health and plant health. And so our process is really designed uh, to focus on, on the high quality organic fertilizers. Um, the quick, Quick overview of our philosophy and vision. Um, we we want to leverage a biological process at the point of production. You know where the chickens are, where the hens are, um, and then take that manure and convert it right there on site into uh, our fertilizer and protein feeds. Um, this gives us a, a significant competitive advantage over our competitors, um, and I'll, I'll get to them a little bit later, but. Most, most most folks in this industry right now are focusing on um, protein production and using food waste. Um, so they have to go collect food waste from multiple sources, truck it, they have to store it, they have to ferment it, um, and it, it costs it costs a lot of money for the transportation, for the storage, for all this equipment that they're having to use. Basically, the chicken ferments the manure right right on site for us. We feed the larvae fresh manure each day. And it takes out a lot of the capital costs in, the, in designing our operations. Um, here, here's a quick slide with a lot of information on the black soldier fly, but I, I'll tell you what, what I think is the most amazing thing about this insect, and it does so many amazing things, but one of the things that it does is when it eats the manure, when it processes the, the poultry manure we feed it, it get, gets rid of almost all the pathogens, all the E. coli, all the salmonella, and it, it does this with uh, any microbial peptides, lauric acid, and some other enzymes inside the, inside the larvae. And a lot of that comes out with the manure. And it, it adds some, some really interesting antifungal properties to the fertilizer that, that are really beneficial in both soil and plant health. Um, quick overview of our process. Um, you know, this is, this is a, a, a big cartoon. Uh, to, to tell you how this really works, we have a, we have a big tractor with a 21 cubic foot bucket with two opposing augers in it. And we drive under the layer house every day. We fill up the bucket and, uh, and then we add some low cost additives to our manure. We add some water back to it. Uh, we add some inhibitors to it and, um, and a little bit of bacteria. We blend up the manure, get it to a really consistent feed. We uh, take it back to our barn where we have a specialized metered pump and we can pump precise amounts of manure into our feed containers. We uh, feed the, the larvae daily uh, for 10 days and then we harvest the, the larvae. We, we separate them uh, using some repurposed agricultural equipment that's been designed uh, for, for, for separating farm material from, from uh, corn. And then, um, and then we dry the material and, and package it and send it to our customers. Um, these numbers right here are, are ultra conservative. Um, we've, uh, we're in the process of uh, negotiating a long-term contract with uh, one of the largest organic suppliers in the United States. And uh, th these numbers right here are, are significantly lower than what we're currently discussing, but we, we like to keep everything very conservative, um, but typically manure sells for, for 10 to $20 a pound. We think worst case scenario, we can make it worth about $300. I mean, it sells for uh, 10 to $20 a ton. We think we can make it worth about $300 a ton, which is, is quite, quite the markup. Um, 
a little little overview of what's going on in the organic fertilizer and protein markets. Um, the organic fertilizer market's expected to triple by 2026, and the organic protein market is expected to double uh, in the same period of time. Uh, we have some, some amazing competition out there that uh, are a little bit further ahead of us in terms of their research and their funding. Um, they've all chosen to go with food waste as their feedstock. They use, uh, you know, food, food that hasn't been sold in grocery stores to brewer's grains, to distillery grains, to, you know, material from ethanol plants. Um, we, we've really focused on manure because we have a, a large feedstock of it in this part of the country and the, the larvae tend to do really well in the manure. Um, one of the things that separates us from the competition is that, um, is that we're the only company so far to get FDA and AFCO approval for our process to raise the black soldier flies in manure. Um, and we've decided to focus our whole process around this design and also our, our process around producing the high quality fertilizer instead of high quality protein. Um, so we're basically going in the opposite direction of all our competitors. Um, uh, most of these guys have recently built new plants within the last year. Each plant they built costs somewhere between 50 and $100 million. Um, we're designing our plant to be more of an agricultural design, uh, something not too different than what a poultry house may look like, um, and keep it, keeping the temperatures in a, in a pretty steady, steady range uh, throughout the year. Um, and I would say just the significantly lower capital cost, um, manure right on site, and approval to do this is really what separates us from, from the work these other guys are doing, but they're all doing really amazing work. Um, a little bit about our team. Uh, my partner, Harley Martin, uh, is kind of a hero in agriculture in Alabama. He, uh, he won the world championship in 1995 as a healer um, out in Las Vegas, beat out 1,500 cowboys. He was also involved in a landmark lawsuit uh, with uh, nuisance smells from manure. He ran a, a hog operation, a big, big CAFO here in Alabama and got sued, turned into a class action lawsuit. Farmers from all over the country realized they were in jeopardy. They sent him millions of dollars. He, uh, he had the longest trial in Pickens County, Alabama history. It lasted eight days and, and he won it. And that's basically what set the precedent for, for manure smells and nuisance smells. But Harley will be the first person to tell you that it's really up to the farmers to, uh, to figure out how to solve this problem. And he, he wants to be one of the leaders in this new industry. Um, Will Wright is our scale-up consultant. Uh, Will's a, a really bright guy. I went to Harvard, uh, got his MBA at Berkeley, was a McKinsey consultant for about four years. And uh, he's really passionate about cleaning up the environment. So he's been working with us uh, really hard on, uh, on figuring out how to scale this process. Lori Moshman, she's our entomologist. Uh, she studied entomology and plant science at Cornell. Uh, she ran the largest black soldier fly operation in the U.S. at White Oaks Pasture, which is the largest organic farm in the southeast, and really brought a lot of her knowledge and, uh, and, and expertise to our team. And she's running our, all our research down in Baldwin County at our site adjacent to Calmaine. I think I mentioned Dupinder Singh. He's the director of research for the IFTC. He's been working with us for two years to develop our product. Frankie Darcy, we also stole him from White Oaks Pasture. He was in charge of their poultry farm. He, he took care of about 200,000 chickens. And um, Bill Marion is our microbiologist. Uh, he's had a black soldier fly colony for about six years. And I uh, was really excited about what you can do with all the, the microbiology inside the black soldier fly's gut, inside the chicken's gut, and also inside our FRAS product. Uh, he's been in charge of all the DNA sequencing in our microbiome, really figuring out what the good manure, what the good bacteria is, what the good fungi are, the nematodes, uh, all the different kind of components of our, our FRAS and how we can refine our product to, to really get the farmers what they need in terms of soil and plant health. Brad Dunn is uh, an investor. He put up half the money for what we're doing. He was the CEO and chair of the Moet company. They built foundries all over um, Detroit turnkey for Ford, Chrysler, and GM. He also helped Halliburton design their fracking system and built them all over the world. He's really an expert in materials handling. 
Uh, David Brown is the president of Jemison Investment Company. Uh, Jemison's probably the most respected investment company in Alabama. And um, very, very fortunate to have him on our team to kind of help us think through um, how, to, how to build a, a profitable and scalable business. And last but not least, Bill Kaiser. He is uh, one of the largest catfish farmers in the United States. His son, Townsend, is the national spokesperson for the catfish industry. They're very interested in um, black soldier fly as a protein feed for, for their fish. Bill's also started uh, and sold a, a successful protein company and is just a, a genius at large scale agriculture uh, design and processes. And he's, he's really the brains behind our kind of low cost agricultural setup for, for how we're handling manure and recycling it with black soldier flies. Um, over the next, um, three to four months, uh, we, sh we should have uh, a working three ton uh, per day prototype facility adjacent to Calmain. Um, we're in the process of finalizing our contract with our a supplier who's offered to purchase 100% of our product uh, throughout our pilot operation next year. And uh, we're, we're starting to build the infrastructure to raise the capital that we'd need to build a 30 ton a day production facility that would start quarter three 2020. Um, here's my contact information. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me and I'm happy to take any questions uh, going forward. Hey, Michael, thank you for the presentation. Um, I'm just going to quickly do my spiel here. Uh, to ask a question, you can use the hand raising icon and I'll unmute you to ask a question or you can go to the question window on the right side of your screen to type in a question. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I have a couple questions of my own. Uh, first of all, how are you feeling? Since the manure um, challenge, Kansas City event. Um, I'm, 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 I'm feeling really, feeling really well. I was a little nervous when my my kids, who weren't supposed to be home today, showed up uh, and they kind of rattled me a little bit. But uh, th thank you for having me, Zach, and, and and thanks for letting me be a part of the manure challenge. Uh, this is this is such a great opportunity for us. Yeah, no problem. Um, I was so just start with my questions, um, at least one of them. Uh, how are you hoping to grow Tronic over the next year, apart from just uh, the production facility, or is that pretty much where you're focused for the next, uh, you know, throughout 2020? Sure. So, so really, the, the next six months, the focus is to get up for production. Uh, we'd like to be around three tons a day by the end of February and uh, start stockpiling our park our, our product for the grow season. Uh, we're really focusing on fertilizer production and uh, want to make sure that that we can uh, store up enough product for when when the planting season starts that uh, we can we can provide enough product for, for, our, for our farmers but it's it's also really to test you know this this design how well it works how how efficient how, how much we can automate what we're doing um, again this is just a demonstration unit so we think uh, our facility we're using this year will will just be kind of help guide us to figure out what we're going to build um i'd say quarter three uh 2020 we'd, we'd like to you know we have a, a fairly uh thought out design um but we think this this next six months of production will help us really refine our, our design and, and hopefully start construction on a 30 ton a day facility which would be adjacent to the calmaine site in robertsville alabama and um and you know we we got a lot to learn, and I uh, want to see you know how how much of this product we can sell, how happy our customers are. We've been working with one of the largest organic suppliers on the west coast. Uh, we got lots of farmers out there testing our product. The FTC is running specialized tests. We have a hemp farm. We've been using our product on all season and and a t test garden on site. So we've got a lot of a lot of great feedback about our product, and uh, just just want to use this time to kind of learn more about. Uh, what's working, what's not working, how we can improve things, and then hopefully incorporate that into our, our next design. Okay, thank you, Michael. I actually have a question from one of the, uh, the viewers. Um, okay. So first of all, they comment on your presentation, um, and they're curious, what is the volume reduction that you see from your process? Yes, so right, right now, um, you know, we're, we're at three tons a day. We're, we basically get from one ton of wet manure we get about 550 pounds of dry sellable product. So that, that that's kind of the conversion rate from, you know, 
the manure we started with, it's about 75% moisture content and uh, we get it down, down below uh, 15% um, for our final product. So a lot of that weight loss is just water. And uh, typically most of that happens throughout our 10 day process. We do a little bit of drying at the end. So, um, you know, we'll be producing a little bit over, um, you know, roughly around seven, 1,700, 1,800 pounds of product, final product, sellable product per day uh, over this next year uh, with starting with three tons each day. Okay, thank you, Michael. Um, so I don't see any viewer questions immediately. Um, what do you, um, so you mentioned your relationship with Carly Martin, your co-founder. That's right. I was curious how he sort of influenced the direction of Charnax and the sort of the, uh, the overall mission of your company. Yeah, so, so I, I would say that Chonex is, you know, really believes, you know, it's founded by a farmer. We believe that farmers, you know, best understand agricultural practices, how to handle manure, how to recycle manure. And uh, Harley's really brought a lot of common sense to, to, to what we're doing. He's um, really knowledgeable about all the agricultural equipment that's available, how large agricultural systems work. Um, most farmers work with pretty low margins. And so, you know, they have to be very frugal. And so I would say how Harley's impacted us is really being, you know, understanding what technology is out there, uh, you know, how the technology works, how to design it around our processes so we can automate. Um, you know, I would say we've probably automated 80, 80 to 85 percent of our processes um, through some pretty simple agricultural equipment. Um, Harley also knows a lot about, you know, CAFO regulations, um, the Department of Environmental Management regulations, um, you know, politics, terminology and agriculture. Uh, and I, I would say Harley's biggest asset is that, you know, the agricultural industry is really insular. They, they don't trust a lot of outsiders. Um, it's because they've been attacked by so many environmental activists uh, like PETA and the Sierra Club and, you know, they send in employees to, you know, take pictures and try and make them look bad. Um, Harley's, Harley went through a really difficult time when he was in that lawsuit and, uh, you know, really kind of, he could have turned things on the, on the, hog producer he worked on, but he, he fought the fight. And they know Har Harley's really loyal to the industry. And Harley brings, I think, a great deal of trust and, and respect from, from the big players in agriculture who know him, know his family, uh, that, that there's no way I, I could have done on my own. Thank you, Michael. So I have one more question from the, uh, from the viewers. Um, one was curious how energy intensive your processing is at the moment and what the source of the energy is. Sure, yeah, that's a great question. Um, I, I would say our, our, our processing is, is very low, uh, very low energy consumption. Um, we, uh, we operate a tractor. It, it drives less than a mile. Um, it takes about um, 15 minutes to go to the barn, collect the manure, and bring it back. Um, we, uh, we, we have a three-phase uh, metered pump that... Uh, that can uh, feed about five containers per minute, um, which doesn't use a lot of of, uh, of energy in, in our space. This is a low cost agricultural barn. We got some hanging lights. We got uh, uh, some louvers and fans to to help control the the ammonia and uh, and, and keep our facility ventilated. Um, our nurseries are built in uh, 40 foot containers, insulated containers. So uh, we, we've been really efficient with our design, our space. Um, one, one of our containers can produce enough uh, larvae uh, for about five tons of manure. Um, so right now we only need one container to, to, to supply the larvae to, to handle three tons a day. And uh, we have another 40 foot container where we grow things out that has a, a, a cooler inside so we can store excess larvae and excess neonates for Kind of meet our when we have ups and downs in our supply, um, but it's 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 a fairly uh, a, a fairly efficient uh, low energy consumption design. Uh, but the interesting thing is we were ju just reached out to a program from Georgia Tech through Southern Research, and they are looking to fund um, an agricultural 
uh, startup uh, that's going into large scale production and provide uh, a grant to, to make it 100% sustainable solar energy. And so we're in early stage discussions about what our next site would look like somewhere between 30 and 60 tons a day, what the energy requirements would be for that, and uh, you know how we could incorporate solar into our de design to make, make our process even more sustainable. Thank you, Michael. Um, another question, uh, do you have any plans to expand into any other manure markets? Yeah, I, I, would, I would say our technology works very well and, and, and hog manure and, and dairy manure, um, but but because you know limited resources, I would say all our competitors started out you know with at least a five million dollar seed round. We started out with one and a half million dollars, um, which has been b both a curse and a blessing. Um, we, uh, we we really decided to stay focused on uh, on layer manure. Um, we've had discussions with Sanderson Farms. And uh, with Pico Foods, two of the largest uh, bro broiler um, poultry producers in, in the United States, and they ha they have some interest in what we're doing. But I, I think with just the limited resources, we just have to be laser focused, prove this out, uh, scale it up, and I think once once we have some some revenue coming in, we could start um, doing a little bit R and D on on the on the hog manure and the and the dairy manure, and I think hog would probably be. The, the most logical next step. Um, but but again, we could spend billions of dollars and build lots of infrastructure and we're, we're, we'd barely make a dent in the, the manure that's being produced by, by the poultry industry right now. Okay, thank you. Um, as another question, uh, have any of your products been tested or had field trials through like a university like Auburn? Yeah, no, so, so all of our, our all of our fertilizer products are being tested um, are currently being tested at the FTC, the International Fertilizer Development Center, which is uh, in Muscle Shoals, Alabama, and um, they're responsible for helping Taylor Purcell, who I mentioned, develop the the time release fertilizer. They've probably also helped uh, two dozen startups like us develop their technology to scale and grow. Um, so. Uh, they 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 had done before we started work with them. I, I think uh, about six years worth of research on insect frass and its special qualities. So they were immediately able to add a lot of value to how we design our process, how we take advantage, how, how we produce a product that that could have the the, the highest value. And they have uh, greenhouses that that our products are currently being grown in. Uh, we we got a permit for a hemp farm. Um, this uh, this grow season, uh, first year it was legal in Alabama. We grew an acre of hemp and we used our frass and then uh, a tea that we make from our frass. Um, and we were one of the few farms in Alabama, just, just only a handful that didn't have any issue, insect issues such as crickets and worms. Most of the crops here got destroyed. Um, and um, so, so we think that there, there's some really interesting uh, insect suppression qualities in, in this product that we're developing. And what we're seeing in our, our test garden on site is uh, there's also a lot of weed suppression. And the, the sides where, where we don't use frass, you see a lot of weed growth like you do in Alabama in a, in a small organic farm. Um, we're not seeing, seeing much weeds in, in, the, in the other side. And then we have uh, three cannabis farmers in Humboldt County right now that are using our product and testing it a bunch of different ways uh, and, and really focusing on them um, because that's really kind of our niche niche customer right now and letting them help us figure out how, how to develop a final product that kind of meets their needs. So we, we got a lot of research going on. One at a major research institution, the, the others more, more kind of industry work. Um, and um, and that, and that is much science-based, but we, we feel really confident with uh, with how, how our products are, are, are uh, I guess, reacting uh, in, in multiple different environments. Thank you. Um, another question I had was, uh, you mentioned your competitors that quite a few of them were dealing exclusively from the food waste space. Do you see this potential option for your company later on, or are you going to stick to manure? Yeah, so, so I think uh, when you work with food waste, it requires a, a specific design. Um, 
you, you know, you have to have the ability to handle large amounts of, of food waste and uh, you have to be able to store that food waste. Um, then you have to be able to ferment the food waste to make all the nutrients available for the black soldier flies. And each batch that they create, it has a different pH level. So then they have to take all those different batches and blend them to get the right pH level uh, for, for, to, to feed their black soldier flies. And most of those guys have really kind of focused on protein production. Um, we know of some, 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 um, some of our competitors who even made frasses because of the markets they were in and, and the, the culture and the, the sodium levels that there's so much salt in their, in their frass or fertilizer that, that they weren't even able to sell it. Um, and so we've kind of taken you know, the approach that we're working with a, a great fertilizer uh, to begin with, which people have been using for a really long time. And you know how we can refine this fertilizer by taking out all the pathogens, but preserving all the all the beneficial bacteria, the beneficial fungi, the the, the nematodes, uh, all the special organic properties, and 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 building something that uh, that that meets the needs of, of of certain farmers. We don't talk too much about what our fertilizer product does or how, how we process it, but it's very different than than what our competitors do, and it would you know t take a whole different level. Of skill and knowledge to, to build a process like they do um, and the same thing for us all, all these competitors that have built these you know 50 million 100 million dollar facilities they can't handle manure and uh, they're not not designed to and we think because of the speed stock and how we handle our process and, and how we develop our product that that we can potentially build um, you know a similar scale and size facility as our competitors for, for for maybe one tenth of the cost, and um, so we're real focused on on keeping our expenses down and developing a profitable pro process and getting the profitability really quick. Uh, we just don't have the luxury of of taking large amounts of money and and uh, you know taking years and years and years to develop a return. Um, we want to come out with something that we can sell quickly and and uh, and, and give our investors a, a return on their investment. Tremendous. Um, one thing I want to check in with was, what do you sort of see as the, as the next sort of big hurdle for your business? Yeah, I mean, I think every time you scale up, so we're looking to go 10x where we are this year, um, to, you know, starting quarter three next year, and which, which will involve building a completely new building. Um, you know, we'll be working with different size containers. We'll have a lot more automation. Um, and, you know, we'll, you know, to prove, you know, you know, every time we scale up, you know, we de-risk de a lot in that process. And, we, you know, we've, we figured it out a lot now and we think a lot of this is transferable, uh, you know, at a 30 ton a day facility. Um, I think the, the biggest trick is that we designed something that's modular, something that can be put adjacent to Calmain or, or, or another big um, egg production facility. And you know we can develop a process that's repeatable, scalable, uh, that's you know proven that it works, and then we can take take this system and we can stamp it out right next to large egg production facilities across the country. And um, you know Calmain, I think has 45 sites uh, across the country, and so, you know to work with someone like that, you know it, it would take a lot of money and a lot of time just, just to handle them. Um, so, so we're trying to get things right. We're, we're, we're trying to develop something that's profitable, that's easy to build, easy to maintain, uses similar equipment and technology as the egg industry, so it's easy to work on, and um, and, and and really be thoughtful about uh, you know not doing anything that's unnecessary or anything too fancy. You know, at the end of the day, we're we're recycling uh, chicken manure. And we're selling fertilizer and we're selling protein, and uh, it doesn't it doesn't have to be too fancy um, for it to work. What sort of partners are you looking for going forward? Well, I, I think we're we're pretty fortunate right now to have the partners that we do. Um, I mean, we have hey, some of the top fertilizer researchers helping us um, develop this product. Um, you know, one of our investors built. Uh, you know, 
considerable number of uh, foundries, turnkey for Ford, GM, Chrysler, Caterpillar, John Deere, um, and helped, helped Halliburton design their, their fracking process and built those, you know, all, all over the world. Um, he, he, he really is a genius and uh, just, we've been at such a small scale, we haven't really been able to, you know, apply some of his genius to, to what we're doing. So I think getting through this next six months and really working closely with him on, you know, what a modular design that can be replicated over and over again is gonna be really important. Um, because we're helping, you know, a, a big company solve a problem, um, and that, you know, that we can demonstrate over this next six months that we got a sellable product and that our customers are happy. I think it opens up a lot of uh, options for low cost capital. We're, we're maybe not talking to venture capitalists anymore, and uh, may, maybe you're working with some of our partners on um, on low cost way to structure uh, these facilities that we're building. Um, and, and I think just right now, the, the team that we have uh, in terms of entomology, microbiology, bio-nutrition, um, engineering, waste engineering, chemical engineering, and, and really kind of bringing all this brain power together and solving, solving these processes in really simple and uh, easy to understand ways and, and developing just protocols and processes that are easy to replicate um, and don't require a lot of labor. Um, it's just managing all those things right now. And I think we got the team to, to help us figure out most of that stuff. Um, and so, so I, I'd say we're pretty fortunate on the partnership side right now that I feel like we have most of the partners that we need already, already in place. Okay. One thing, uh, another audience question was, so you, you're focused on, doing, on using layer manure, but uh, would boiler manure be as suitable given a different process? Yeah, so so broiler manure actually has a higher nutrient value than layer manure. Uh, if you think about, um, you know, they're a layer chicken that's laying an egg, um, they're just they're just keeping it, you know, going just enough to pr produce an egg every day, but the broiler, the broiler chickens, you know, they're getting them to grow really fast. Uh, and so the, the feed that those chickens get, uh, as a, as a lot more higher protein, uh, a lot more higher nutrients um, than the layer manure. Um, the issue with the roller manure is, you know, this takes those chickens about 50 days to grow and the logistics of collecting the manure um, and then bringing it to a, a centralized facility where you could process it. It'd be a little bit more complex, um, a little bit more logistics to work out, but most of those, uh, Roller houses are highly concentrated in, in certain areas, and it would definitely be easier to do. We've uh, we've been running some tests on Pico Foods, uh, which is one of the largest, I think maybe sixth largest uh, chicken producer in the U.S. They're based here in Alabama, um, and and their manure works great. And there's a lot of tricks for taking older manure and blending it with new manure and adding some probiotics to it to kind of rejuvenate it and bring it back to life. Um, there's some some low cost additives that we add with the manure that the, the larvae really like. And once we get it all blended up, it, it works great. Um, but but right now, uh, we think the lowest hanging fruit is the, the layer house because you know now layer houses, uh, I guess current construction, you know, they're the layer houses are over a million chickens. And uh, you know, they poop every day, we can collect it every day fresh. There's such large volume. We're just going to where the most manure is being produced. Um, and, and typically, layer manure is harder to use as a fertilizer. It's a little bit wetter, it's hard, hard, hard to drive and rollers. And um, I, I think we're solving uh, a, a big problem, especially for the older layer house facilities that don't have conveyors, don't have dryers. Um, how you can handle that manure and, and recycle that manure and keep those barns manure free every day, which I think improves uh, you know, the you know the quality of the environment that, that the hens are in and and, and adds uh, you know a lot of you know a lot of issues for the egg producers not having to manage all that manure and and, and the flies and the rats and all the stuff that you got to deal with when you when you got that stuff when it's gone it's just a nice clean easy operation to manage and uh, that you know that's what we want to help our customers do okay thank you Michael um, as sort of a final question what can the audience do to help you with your company? Wow. Um, 
I would say um, not knowing much about the audience and, and who's out there. Um, you know, I, I think uh, insects and poop uh, tend to gross out people. Um, and, and I think it's going to take a, you know, a little bit of education on folks that, that really don't understand kind of natural processes and how they work. But if you think about it for, for millions of years, uh, chickens have been running around eating insects, pooping uh, after they eat the insects and the insects later flies in the manure, they eat it and they grow and then the chicken eats the insects out of the poop and it's just recycling. But the, you know, I, I think the understanding the really complex biological process of how feed is broken down in the gut of the chicken, how that bacteria comes out uh, with the poop, and then how the the bacteria and enzymes react with the manure, uh, and then the final product, which is frass, which has a, a lot of beneficial products, would would be for for folks to you know to you know to really get behind and support this this process that's sustainable. That's kind of the way God intended nature to work. Uh, we're basically just industrializing and commercializing. It's kind of you know Mother Nature's way of a process and manure. And um, I guess be open and supportive. Um, I think my, our biggest fear is, you know, in the, in the protein market side, and uh, you know, all these competitors, they're basically most of their proteins going to backyard chickens right now, and we could, you know, easily sell our protein to backyard chickens. But I, I think as as the industry grows, um, our competitors are either going to want to get in manure um, and compete with us, or they're either going to kind of say you are what you eat and try and make our, our products look bad. And um, we hope that I guess the audience and the, the folks in this world will realize this is kind of a natural process. This is the way God intended it. And this is the way proteins been produced through insects for millions of years. And, uh, and, and hopefully we won't have to get in a fight over who makes the best protein with, with our competition. All right, thank you for participating, Mike. Thank you for participating, Michael. Thank if, you. you'd like to learn more, if you'd like to learn more about Shonex, please let us know by answering this poll question. Uh, we host these calls every week at 3 p.m. Central. You can register for the AgriFood Conversations web, webinar series by going to agrifoodconversations.com. A replay of this webinar will be emailed to you in the next 24 hours. If you know others that may want to see this webinar, they will be able to access it on agrifoodconversations.com within 24 hours. Thank you, and uh, have a good day.